Max. Yes, TJS. Yeah, you quite a way down. Yeah. So, yeah, nice reading. Have we got a few then? Got loads. What about right, about really 20 good. or 30. Yeah, wow. and, and some very, very good ones. Interestingly, Harita. They brighten and brighten. Footsteps linger, echoing everywhere, looking for someone. Is that Max? That's Max. Yeah. There's, there's one by somebody called Harita who, interestingly, her spelling isn't sound, but when she when she reads it, she reads it far too quickly. Red eyes twitch. They brighten and brighten. Oops, sorry. Um, but she doesn't make the errors in her Red speech. Red eyes twitch. They br Hang on. <laughs> anyway, um, so I thought Max's was good. Have you got any others? You, I mean, lots of them are good. Yeah, I mean... Was, uh, I've just moved them around, so I've lost track of where I was. Was it Edith's? Oh, the, gallery. the gallery's got a lot of... Behold, Drago, my magnificent earth dragon, king of the jungle, calm yet powerful. His dull black eyes full of thought, full of hope for the future. His long tail coiled around the fluorescent crystals. His moonlit fur attracted all that saw. Within his firm jaw, razor-sharp teeth lay tinted green from all the herbs he devours. His... Yeah. Okay. I think we need to keep a weather eye on celebrating a range of schools. To yeah. try, try to do that on the Padlet, so I'm always looking out for some of the schools we don't know. Very I'm well. gonna have to take. I'm gonna have to take the padlets quite slow today because there was there were a lot of um, children pushing the boundaries last week. In what way? I just swearing and poo and that kind of stuff. Do we need to say generally to everybody? Do you remember that David reads everything on the padlets? I'm not sure. Let's leave it for this week, and if it continues to be a problem, we'll uh, we'll 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 send out a, an email. Yeah. Is it is it a school in particular? Can't tell. On Padlet, you just don't know. You see. On on Jotcast, you could get the IP address. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's half past. Let's. Uh, well, let's start. Let's get everybody in. So, we all ready? Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Teaching Live. It's week three of the spring term. Looking out in the garden, the um, snowdrops are out here, uh, which is always a sign that things are starting to change and spring is on its way. It's actually the weather's been awful the last few last few days. We've done nothing but rain, but um, it's brightened up this morning. Uh, as, as I said, the snowdrops are out, feeling quite quite uh, chipper about today. Uh, how are you feeling this morning, Pi? Well, I'm feeling very well, actually. Um, legs getting better, and um, I am uh, absolutely on it this morning. Looking forward to the session. I've got some fabulous writing last week. I mean, the, the gallery's got some great drawings of dragons, and the quality of some of the... Uh, I mean, early on, there were two images that went up by Max and Carter um, from... Um, turn furlong both cracking pieces of writing i don't think carter's got his uh up on the i don't know i did, couldn't find it <clears throat> actually on the blog but i can see the image uh and read it from there great piece of writing so early on there were some really really fine pieces of writing looking forward to today's session uh how are you david i'm very well thanks pi um was kept very busy this week by the children's um art by their audio and particularly by their blog posts and in fact one really encouraging thing uh and i want to thank some of the teachers for this are some of the comments that were coming in 
Uh, some really well structured comments and feedback for children. Uh, we had about forty or so comments this this uh, this week, which was great. We always love comments, so yeah, do keep them coming and well done for the teachers who are encouraging that. Yeah, we're almost up to seven thousand comments on the on the uh, teaching live website now, um, and I think we're up to almost forty thousand uh, stories and poems and uh, pieces of writing, which is which is astonishing, really. Uh, <laughs> Um, an absolutely vast library of of children's writing. Um, so, uh, without further ado, what's the game today, Pi? Well, what we're thinking about today is uh, actually it's sort of we're starting our work really on Bright Storm. My book smells good. I always do that with books. I stand in the library having a sniff at it. Um, excellent story, Bright Storm. If you know this one or your class have done this one, obviously go on to the second one or even the third in the series. <coughs> um, and if you get through it, you might start the next one, if you see what I mean, because we've got this session. I mean, four narrative sessions, story sessions, where we'll write our own adventure. But I thought in order to um, set the whole thing up, that this week we might think about, right, if you were going to go on a skyship adventure and you're going to join the crew in the same way that the main characters in the book join the crew, Arthur and Mordy, um, uh, join Harriet Culpepper's crew and set off on the skyship, what would you take in your rucksack? What would be useful to have with you? Now, obviously, you can have real things. Um, but you can also, because it's a skyship adventure, you can invent things to take with you. Um, shall we try an alphabet, David? See if we can get through a bit of an alphabet. Go for it. Yeah, always. Okay. I always find these a bit more difficult than they than you think. Well, it's yes, it's funny, isn't it? Because there are millions of things that are possible. And then you get the letter B and you can't think of anything. Your mind goes horribly blank at that particular point. So um, it is a bit tricky. It, do you want to start or shall I start? You start, Pi. It gives me an extra second to think about things. OK, well, that's easy because I, for A, I always go for an axe. And the reason, so if you can think of an object, that's great to take with you. If you can think of an, a reason, that's an extra. So I'd have an axe obviously for chopping down firewood uh, in case we land in a polar region where it's really cold. Okay, what are you going to take? Uh, I'm going to take an inconspicuous bowler hat <laughs> that when once put on, you become invisible. I love that idea. Um, and I'm going to take with me one of my favourite animals, but this is a very special one. I'm going to take a cat with me, but it's a rather curious cat because this cat um, is capable. It's very, very silent and it's capable of creeping into uh, an enemy camp or creeping up on two trolls that are having a conversation, listening in. And it can telepathically tell me things. So I've got a cat snuggled up at the top of my rucksack. A good companion, of course, uh, as well as having this amazing talent. Mm, very good. Uh, I'm going to go D. I'm going to go with a dice. And it's ah. going to be a, a, a dice that's not got numbers on it, but it's got solutions on it. So if I get to a point in, in my adventure where I don't really know what to do, I can roll the dice and take advice from the dice. Ah, I love that idea. That's a great one. Um, I'm going to go for E. Um, I'm going to take um, the eyesight from an eagle so that I can see vast distances, which might be useful when we're traveling in terms of spotting our enemy. So that's E. Have you got an F for me? I have. Um, I'm going with the fitness instructor. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you need one certainly i do well uh, well the thing is if we're going to be on the if we're going to be on a uh, a skyship for a, a serious amount of time i want to keep the crew fit and healthy so my fitness instructor will will work with them in the morning 
in the evening and the uh, uh, during the day, just to make sure everyone's fit, eating healthily, and ready for possibly a battle. Who knows? <laughs> I don't think I want to be on your crew, David. <laughs> I know you're not going to be the fitness instructor, John. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's a straightforward enough game, John. You think of something that might be useful, it might take on your sky ship with you, either to use in the sky ship or on the jer- or on when you land and you're looking for whatever you're looking for. Uh, and if you can give a reason, that's really good. If you really get stuck on a letter, just say pass. And um, if your partner can't think of something, just move on. But it'd be good to see if anybody in four minutes can get to the end of the alphabet and come up with something decent. And later on, it is a nice one to actually write up, I think, a really good alphabet of things that you might take on a journey. OK, so I've got my uh, timer on screen. Um, uh, so four minutes, a, a, a nice list of uh, alphabetical things that you're going to take on your journey. Off you go.
Okay, that's the four minutes up. So bring yourselves back to the whiteboards. Uh, we're going to go straight to the Teaching Live website. So I'll just share that with you. There we go. And we will now go along to today's session. And we will go straight to Padlet activity number one. So what are we doing on the Padlet this morning, Pi? Well, we're just building on what we've started. We're leading towards putting together what you might call a list poem, um, ideas of things that would be handy to take with you uh, in, in your rucksack or um, knapsack or um, suitcase or whatever you're taking. And this is just about extending the ideas, really, John. If you scroll down a wee bit, you'll see two ideas. I would take a magical frog. So that's your first idea. You think, right, I've got a magical frog and then extend it a little bit. I would take an emerald tree frog. You know those, I'm sure everybody will have seen these on the TV. You get them in, um, I think you get them in South America in the, um, in the Amazon rainforest. They're a very, very vivid green colour, these frogs. You also get yellow ones and red ones and spotted ones. So I've gone for an emerald tree frog. So I've named the type of frog and I put in the colour. So I didn't say green. I went for emerald because I wanted to interest my reader and dress the idea up. And then I've given a reason, as David and I were trying to give reasons for the things that we were going to take. I would take an emerald tree frog that can cast invisibility spells. I've remembered capital letter and full stop. I can publish you scroll back up a wee bit, here's my list of ideas just to trigger um, some thoughts. If you can scroll back up a bit, John. Are you there? Germany? Yeah. No. OK, here we go. I would take a wasp sting to startle unwary sky goblins. So I've invented these things called sky goblins that fly around um, the sky ship and attack it. Unwary. I like that. I would take two leather bound books, one titled Skyship Navigation for Beginners and the other Wolves, Dragons and Other Beasties, Methods for Their Avoidance. I would take a purse of never ending wishes only to be used in an emergency. I would take an atlas showing the ends of rainbows. I would take a pair of 12 league boots in case of crash landing. Now, 12 leagues. Um we talk about miles nowadays, or some people work in kilometres. Um, years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, they used to talk about leagues. A league is quite a long way. So a 12-league boot, you have a pair of boots, that if you wear these special boots, instead of taking a, you know, a step like that, you can do, let's say, 10 miles in one step. I would take a pair of 12 league boots in case of crash landing. I would take a fur lined cape, the colour of a rock for keeping warm in the winter and using as camouflage if lost in the mountains. I was thinking of a cape that you could. Um, it's rock colour. So if you were on a mountainside, you could put it over you and crouch down and anyone looking for you wouldn't be able to see you. So what we're looking for, John, is taking some of those ideas that you've shared in your pairs, dressing them up now with your use of language. Touch of alliteration is allowed. Obviously, some similes are allowed. Um, and it's I would take, ba -dum, ba dum ba dum capital letter, full stop. And I know that David will be really looking for capital letter, um, full stop. Remember, everything that you post is read by David. So just remember that when you're um, posting uh, your ideas up. Capital letter, full stop. Anything else to say, John? I think this yeah, is I'm fair. I'm pointing out a couple of bits of punctuation here, Pi. Yep. So you've got the wasp's sting, the sting belonging to the wasp. So that's been, that's had an apostrophe added to it to show yep. possession. And also the uh, the quote marks around the titles for the books. Yes, and they're quite unusual. I want to say quite unusual. It's something that you don't use that often. But if you put a title, <coughs> um, then 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 you put quote marks around it. The other uh, thing, John, I've done is if you look at leather bound second, the second line, hyphenated. 
that yeah, was a, it, that's a that's never ending spell. It's what call it's what's called compound adjective. So the noun is book, and I've said, well, it's leather bound. And then we've got wishes further down. They're never ending. And right down at the bottom, I've got a cape that is fur lined. So if you're going to do a compound where you put two words together to form one sort of adjective, yep, you do that. Now, Dave is very kindly put that up. I think this is straightforward, but let's really pay attention to the quality of the language and be um, really careful with the capital letters, full stop and other punctuation. So Roman, Toby and Roman from St. Mary's, I would take a unicorn to fly around to get away from grass goblins. Yep, you definitely want to get away from grass goblins, a horrible smelly things. I would take bottles in case I would get thirsty. Um, so Hindi, I would I would go a little bit further than that. I would say, what 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 is it? What's your favorite drink? I would I wouldn't just take bottles. I would I would take something. I would take I would take bottles of Coca-Cola or I would take bottles of um lemonade or something i would i would i would be a bit more specific just to increase the interest like ibrahim's idea of fire bears getting some good basic stuff here in terms of capital letter full stop um Mustafa uh, from uh bolton parish i would take the eyesight from an ultramarine blue vulture to grant me better vision to see through dark mists um, which is a great idea, uh, Mustafa. You've sort of taken Pi's idea and extended it, which is good. We like that kind of thing. Now, ultramarine is blue, so you don't need ultramarine blue, I don't think. I think you could just say from an ultramarine vulture would uh, um, be good. And I like Habiba's idea, also from Bolton Parish. I would take a never-ending bag to throw all my rubbish in. Um, I live in the countryside and nothing winds me up more than going for a walk and seeing thrown away rubbish. So I really like your idea, Habiba. That's a very, very good one. Um, Alfie, I would take an apple just for health and food. Uh, yeah, apples are healthy. But what, how would you describe your apple? Is it rosy red? Is it green and crisp? You could add a little bit of description in there. Habiba, never ending. Just use that hyphen. Oh, yes. Make one, one word. Just watch out for that. Uh, Fatima's done that. Um, uh, I would take a walkie talkie in case there is an urgent call. There are urgent calls or an unexpected apocalypse arrives. <laughs> you need to look up the spelling of apocalypse, Fatima, but very good. <laughs> we don't like unexpected apocalypses. It tends to ruin your day. <laughs> Gosh, Bolton Parish are really on it this morning. Uh, oh, John Moore coming in. I would take a dancing monkey to keep me entertained. Has the, has the dancing monkey got a name, Afra, from John Moore? I would take a dancing monkey called Pie. Thank you very much. <laughs> So I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm sure dancing will be uh, your new hobby now that you your hip is on its on the mend pipe. Oh yeah, I cut a good um, good <laughs> side. Rachel from THS, uh, 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 the lemons a nice idea. You need a full stop. So remember, everybody, you if you if you forget, if you publish too early, and you miss something out or whatever, just nip back and do the editing. Editing is a good writing habit. So we love it when people. Um, do that. Ooh, uh, Alex from John Moore, I would take a bottle of acid to poison my nemesis. Oh, yeah. Nice uh, nemesis that. being your sort of arch enemy. Your, your, well, actually, your doom is your nemesis, isn't it, Pi? Yes. Lachlan from the Isle of Mal, I would take a compact falcon for hunting rabbits for meat and clothes. That's a good idea. Yeah, like that one. Ah, that's an interesting Merton Bank. Uh, um, Maya, I would dodge the pinky, pink, sparkly arrows of Cupid. <clears throat> Nula from Dervaig, I would take a book with information on everything. That's re a really good idea. Very useful to have a book that's got everything in. Um, I might describe the cover of the book. I might yes. make 
leather bound, I might make it. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, dual encrusted. I, I, I would. I def definitely try and paint a picture of what the book looks like for the reader. Yeah, or give it a name. Elise and Sebastian Finzine from Finzine. I would take an electric eel to use as a sword against the evil swamp goblins. So it's it's Fingen pie. I am reliably informed. Fing Finnen? Fingen. Fingen. Yes. Uh, I know this because I actually spoke to uh, somebody from the school um, on the telephone and I asked them how to say it and they said Fingen. And Austin from TGS, I would take a fantastic foldable motorbike for escaping a herd of manticores. Ooh. I like your fantastic foldable because you've got a touch of alliteration in there and it just elevates it. A blessing from Bolton Parish. I would take a getaway car. I think getaway is one word. Um, it's an interesting, actually, getaway. Uh, a get away it probably was originally hyphenated, but it has become one word. It's one of those strange uh, language things. I would take a getaway car in case my skyship deflates. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I, uh, Matthew and Lorne from Fingen. I would take a frying pan as it is a good multi-purpose ob object. Multi-purpose, well hyphenated object to use as a shield, weapon, and for cooking food. <laughs> Uh, you can't, can't you can go a long way with a decent frying pan. Uh, beer from THS. I would bring a uh, that's Truro High School. I would bring a cinnamon brown antelope with the power to summon up any summon up anything that is needed. It's a strange antelope. Freddy from JMPS. I would take a large fur coat lined with many pockets. Just have a look at the spelling of that word lined. You've missed one e, uh, an E out. I'm sure you'll be able to sort that. Um, Rosie, I would take the band Queen's bass guitar to keep a catchy tune as I fight sky fish. Love that idea <laughs> of sky fish. I uh, like the idea of dramatic bass music. <laughs> yes, <that's right>. a, <laughs> superb idea. Um, Very good idea. Yeah. So uh, Afra's uh, edited hers. Well done, Afra. I would take a dancing monkey called Jeremy to keep me entertained. <laughs> yeah, we like we like that idea. Yes. And and Amelia, Ami, Emily has got. I would take a knowledgeable octopus to help me solve problems. Wow. Ah, the good old knowledgeable octopus. Exactly. Always handy to have around. And Sienna is going to take a clown. For um, amusement's sake, just have a look at your spelling in that one, um, because it's a bit dodgy. I would take a bat, Cameron, with spikes on it to scare away prey. Mason and Jacob, a helmet so I could go on moonwalks on the moon. You might be able to express that a bit better because you've got the word moon twice and you need to think about capital letters and full stops. So just check before you post. Harry at Bolton Parish, I would take a golden egg of poison to feed to the crying clouds. I would take a slice of dragon fruit to control the sky flappers. How about that? Izzy, I would take a therapy dog called Alfie in case it gets too much. <laughs> Great. Now... Are we should we be coming out of this? Jim? Yeah, I just would say, David, that that the adding the padlets at the bottom works much better than having them jumping around. It's a it's a new thing that David spotted and it's made out that's made our life a whole lot better. So as he adds them, they come they, they they're not sort of appearing all over the place and everything's shifting all over the screen. They're all they're all appearing at the bottom and that definitely works better. So if you could do that in the future, Dave, uh, that would be great. Um, yeah, and just finishing off with Amelie from THS, I would take an adventurous armadillo to play with when I need a little happiness. And we all need a little happiness. So we'll come out of the Padlet. And it's the uh, fact, John, that she said adventurous armadillo, isn't yes. it? It's yes. just a nice, nice little bit of alliteration uh, in there. So that's uh, very good. 
Um, and we've we had a little bit of feedback. So um, John Moore is saying that they prefer the Padlet like this as well. So that's that's really good to know. Um, so uh, on to uh, our audio. So let's have a quick uh, whiz to the blog challenge page. The audio is at the bottom of the blog challenge page. If you go to the bottom of the blog challenge, you will see all the audio. We've had loads this week, uh, which is great. Really, really, really good to hear. And I'm looking for one by uh, Max um, from Turn Furlong. Is that right, David? It is. It should be there. Um, just throw about it. I think you call it in yellow, but... It's in yellow. There we go. Um, I like this one. I like the poem. Uh, you got two. I saw two. Um, I think originally on the internet. I think a teacher put them up on Twitter. There was a great poem by Carter, but unfortunately, I can't see it on here. Um, but it was Carter. It was a, a really fantastic poem. So too was this one by Max, and he's read it really nicely. Okay, I'll play this one um, for you. There's loads to listen to, and there's loads of really good ones as well. So well done, everybody. Um, could have picked from several this morning, but we'll pick this one from Max. Red eyes twitch. They brighten and brighten. Footsteps linger, echoing everywhere, looking for someone. Glistening scales shimmer in the darkness, clattering in the black. Huge horn spikes, standing tall, feeling ready to find their next prey. Piercing claws send shivers down your spine, removing all in the way. Tremendous teeth bite through all of you, never feeling guilty. That's that's really, really good, Max. And I particularly I was particularly impressed with a little bit of rhyme in there, which as Pi is always telling us that don't when you're writing poems don't get hung up on rhyme because it very rarely works properly but the pray and way that works didn't it pi it did and that's partly why i chose it because i thought that's really clever um as you rightfully say it, it, the rhyme worked um some people a few people have tried to use rhyme all the way through and it just destroyed the poem can we listen to i owners just scroll down that one there um, hi. Yeah, because you can also see the text there. Let me just. Yeah, make it go larger. Let's just see if oh, no. Let me see if I can. It doesn't want to. That's probably because so many people are on it. Um, it's scales. I'm just going to go back to the beginning. It's pitch black eye, like a cave of curiosity, trying to emerge out. It's sea green skin, rough, like the surface of mercury. It's... There we go. Try My again. dragon. It's pitch black eye, like a cave of curiosity, trying to emerge out. It's sea green skin, rough, like the surface of mercury. It's hundreds of pure teeth pointed like a blunt pair of scissors. It's cherry red tongue shaped like a mermaid's tail. It scales in a long rigid line scraping together as he moves. It's pea green wings extended fully like legs after a long car journey. My dragon is friendly but fierce, like a cold fire. Well, I really like that one, Pi. Um, well, thank you for choosing it because I think she really, she, it was paced really, really well, um, which is, I'm guessing, the reason why you uh, chose it. Yes, uh, some very good images there, very individual images. She wrapped it up nicely at the end with the contrast that it was, you know, sort of friendly and she liked it, but also it was very fierce. And then that very last bit about cold fire, nice image juxtaposition of two ideas there were some excellent ones on there worth going back and listening to if you've got five minutes spare get everybody on there and have a listen to different ones really good work and well done for getting so many up on the up on the uh, audio we're re really impressed with that so it's been a a great start to the term from this this group of writers we have to say so padlet number two excuse me 
Okay, uh, I see, John, we're building on what we've already done. And um, so this is about dropping in to a sentence some extra information. And there are different ways of doing it. So my first one is using brackets. So if you say, I'm going to lob in an extra bit of information. So I'm going to take an invisibility cloak and then I add in using brackets, an extra bit of information. Um, my original sentence is an invisibility cloak to ensure that I can enter forbidden places without detection. And then I've added in made of storm berries. I don't actually need that, but it's an extra little detail. So I've used brackets for that. The next one is commas either side in, it's called in parenthesis an eternal light which stays uh, an eternal light which stays alight forever to guide me through mountain caves is there anything you notice there john when i yeah. read it <laughs> i'm yeah. not i'm not so keen on that line pi i have to say because you've got a light and a light and yeah, that, yeah repetitive and i think you should have uh, lingered longer on a light yeah, yeah. I noticed it when I read it aloud. And of course, as we've said before, it, it's so tricky doing writing because it's easy um, to do something that's inaccurate or weak. Uh, technique I'm using arrow is commas either side and use a which clause. That's called a relative clause. And it's called a relative clause because the which bit relates back to the original idea, the subject of the sentence, the eternal light. Um, and it relates more information. A talking magpie that can speak all languages, which can steal from a dragon's treasure without protection. A shadow caster to brighten dark spaces. A goblin net that is made of fine steel for trapping unwanted cave goblins. A truth teller, which is never wrong, so that no one can fool me with wicked lies as sharp as a nettle sting. So you've got to drop in a sort of a reason or extra information into your sentence and try and dress your sentence up. The tricky bit, John, is to either remember the brackets either side of the extra information. If it's not brackets, then remember a comma either side. So, so the, the way to approach this, I think, is to come up with an idea first and write out the sentence. So an eternal light to guide me through mountain caves and then think of your extra bit of information. So if you come up with the original idea, then add it in, and then spend a little bit longer than Pi did on that one to get it get it just right. <laughs> okay. So we'll go on to the Padlet and see who can come up with some good relative clauses or, or brackets. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I like that idea, actually, <laughs> Roman and Toby's. I just I can't read it. I'm laughing so much. <laughs> the very first one. An infinite flushing toilet made of steel memories. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, 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 uh, why, why, because it's made of memories means that you never have to flush again. But uh, <laughs> it's just and it's steel memories, which I thought was interesting. Yes. I would take a torch guiding me through the night, leading me to the city of Woodchurch. A talking parrot that never stops speaking, which can fly high all the way up to the night sky. A never-ending light that can guide me through the dark, gloomy nights. A goblin net made of metal for catching sand goblins. That's nicely dropped in. A red light made of rubies to guide me through adventures. So that's Hadia. Well done. Oh, that's good. I like that because um, the rubies obviously relates to the red light. I think, Sophie, you've got you've dropped it in the wrong place because it now reads a bright red, a, a bright red smoking fire phoenix. I think it probably should be a fire phoenix, bright red smoking to protect me from enemies. And um, where you've got your enemies, that's a plural so it's IES. So the Y, remember, changes to IES and to heal me when I'm injured. Nice ideas, though. An infant, uh, Georgian Callum, an infinite, 
an infinite amount torch made out of steel, so I never need to replace its. So there's something missing at the end there, didn't, but you've got an interesting idea. Clover, Clover from John Moore. A pack of paper, which is made of the finest wood, to write to my family on the expedition. Now, you've used um, dashes, and actually you just, you've done it just right. All you have to do is replace the dashes with commas. Uh, a pack of paper, comma, which is made of the finest wood, comma, to write to my family on the expedition. Excellent. Actually, grammatically, you are allowed to do what she's done. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, but it's I mean, it's quite a technical way of doing it, quite an advanced way of doing it, but I'd, well, I'd say it was I'm good. Corrected there, right? I always like to correct you, John. <laughs> well, it's one of my favourite occupations is correcting you, Pi, because I... <laughs> <Are> we... <laughs> as, as you well know. <laughs> Matthew and Lorne from the school I find hard, Finn something or other, a portal gun which was discovered inside of an abandoned laboratory that shoots radiant blue and orange portals like a wormhole. There's a really elaborate, interesting idea. I have no idea what that means or does, but it no, sounds great. It does. Uh, Sophie, a prophecy book from the 1600s written by a wise witch before her death. Oh, that's a good one. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Ania from TGS, I would bring a chameleon with magical abilities that can make me camouflage from em enemies. Afra's taking a <clears throat> Afra's on fire today uh, from John Moore. A handful of hope to guide me through my journey. Um, so the only thing I would add to that one, to, to add a, red, a relative clause, perhaps I'd add something like a handful of hope um, and then maybe brackets in a velvet bag or something like that, just to just to add that bit of extra information. Uh, Liliana for JMPS, I would take a pixie to guide me in the night that's made from core memories. Very interesting ideas, John. They're really thinking... Yes. Hard about this because it it's sort of easy to write any old thing or write something for a cheap laugh. But obviously, David's double checking everything that goes up and won't put up anything that's um, that's not well thought through or worthy. St. Mary's. Uh, Freddie, Freddie from Bolton Parish, a sneaky mouse that Ooh, looks that. for oncoming battles. So we are ready for anything. So have a look at that one, Freddie. I really like the idea. There's a, a little bit of punctuation missing there uh, around your relative clause. Uh, and it's a sneaky mouse, but it's not, not an, because um, there's no uh, vowel. A sneaky mouse that looks for oncoming battles. So we are ready for anything. So you should have spotted from the way I read it there where you where your punctuation needs to go. go. So Maria's really gone for... From Bolton, Paris, six things found in an adventure backpack. An axe in case animals get too harsh at you when you're hiking. A never-ending light, you need a um, hyphen there, for at night in case you hear the gnarls of a tiger. A truth crystal for if you need questions to be answered immediately. A talking dove for your companion so you don't get lonely in your journey. A butterfly net so you can have another pet for entertainment while you hike. A tent that extends in case... Your other two fly away from the strong winds. I, lo I love the talking dove. It's talking really something quite dogs. pleasant about that. Yes. I like Ellie's earbuds, brackets, made of memories, reminding you of the greatest times you had with family, friends and loved ones. Earbuds oh, made of memories. It's a very unusual idea, that. Good one. Uh, Mukti from Bolton Parish has been watching Traitors, I think. A golden chain that suffocates the victim with lies so I can secretly cheat without anyone knowing. Which is great. <laughs> like Anika's, um, I would take my dead husband's wedding ring. Oh, gosh. You dropped in any information, but that's quite a powerful thought. I mean, Sophia's got, I would take a chain made of golden steel which makes the person it's weaved around tell the truth, a sort of truth-telling chain. A dream dragon made of luck. So that's from St. Mary's, Darcy and Erin. 
And Kirsty from Mull has just added in a name, my horse, and in brackets, Nelly, to jump over the clouds and the mountains. If it's called that Nelly, works really well. Yeah, yeah. If, if it's called Nelly, obviously going to need a capital letter there for, for Nelly. Um, Liza, I would take a cloud full of rain and lightning to shock my enemies and drain them. Drain them? Drown them? Now, I noticed An 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 Anvika from Turn Furlong did an excellent dragon poem. So let's see what she's got in her list. An invisibility cloak so I can take something when I need it without anyone seeing me. A dressing gown to keep me warm whenever I get too cold. A bottle of energy drink to give me energy whenever I need it. Some strong pets to protect me whenever I'm about to get attacked. Food in case I get hungry. A map in case I don't know the directions to where I want to go. And I like Elisa and Salim's from Bolton Parish come up with three good ideas there. A purple portal. A touch of alliteration. <coughs> uh, Hamad has taken the infinite flushing toilet idea again. Uh, made from frostbites, which is an in that's that's ingenious. You'd never need to flush again. I don't think I'd want to sit on a toilet made of frostbites, would you, Pi? No, actually, when I taught, I used to ban <laughs> ban things like toilets because whilst some people can control the humour, yes, uh, there were always uh, others who who decided to take it far too far, went over the top, and then there'd be there'd be tears before bedtime. <laughs> so certainly with most of my classes, I, I, I had to ban that sort of thing. But, it, but the frostbite's a good idea. You're absolutely right. Diamond Sand Goblin. Love that idea. That has laser eyes for shooting prey and lives in a skyscraper. So don't forget, don't forget we're losing track on the, some people are losing track on what we're doing here, which is to add the extra in, uh, information, either in brackets or um, as a relative clause using commas. Yeah. Um, so we'll come out of the Padlet. Some really good stuff going on there. Uh, itching powder, Mage of Dragon's Memories. So Ooh. strong it will itch itself to death. Oh, <laughs> that sounds horrendous, Meg. I'm not keen on that at all. <laughs> it to a jacket of joy. Death sounds a particularly grim way of dying. But I just there's one there's one more I want to add here. Now I don't know who wrote this one. But it's from Barclay Primary School. A scary dream, living in a nightmare of purgatory, dying to awake. Oh, oh, oh a, a dream dying to awake. That's a very good idea. Yeah. yeah. A ju juxtaposition, dying to yeah. awake. It's a juxtaposition. Yeah. It's, it's very clever. That's, That's, I like that a lot. Yeah. Whoever wrote that, make sure you put it into your final one. So it's nice to get that one from Barclay. Well done. Um, so we need to go to have a look back to the session page to have a look at the gallery. Uh, if I look at the right one, uh, if we visit the gallery. Now we had a lot of really dragon, dragon, dragon. Uh, pictures. That's a great one from Rosie from um, TH. In fact, Rosie's been drawing multiple dragons by the look of it. And both <laughs> of them are ex excellent. I like Willow's uh, illustrated poem with yep. her dragon. Good Which poem. Very good. Uh, the water dragon. Yeah, uh, really nicely done. Yeah, very, very good. And we've got a whole load of dragons from St. Mary's. Yeah, Devon. Uh, Devon, St. Mary's. That yeah. Very bold drawings. Uh, yes, absolutely. Loads from St. Mary's and some from... Uh, Abiba, Bolton Parish. Nula from Isle of Mull there. Again, has illustrated her dragon. Uh, I love the shading, the multicolored shading of that dragon. And Tremendous. I like it as well. It's really good. Yeah. And a nice line to put in. Its skin is like papyrus paper used thousands of years ago by the Egyptians. Or look, if, you look, if you look at the eye, it's an it Egyptian, have an Egyptian look about it. It does. An Egyptian look about it. You're quite right. Well spotted, David. Yeah, very clever. There's some there's some some good black and white sketching going on from turn furlong and again the Can you click on Carters, John, just a bit up? It's just a 
No, no, the one, to the oh. I mean, look at that. But the one, with the one with the poem in, where he's put his poem in, just to the right of that, John. Oh yes, it's the, so that's that's the drawing. So that's, that's the drawing. <laughs> and no mercy. Yeah, that dragon does look as if it would give no mercy. I mean, look at the, the quality of the writing. A threatening roar echoes, ominous screeches sound from the abyss of the lair. Bloodshot eyes are seen, glowing like a shining torch, piercing the blackened night sky. Endless wings flap casting an ancient shadow, making the ground dark and gloomy. Menacing horns torment paper, sharp as teeth they frighten citizens. Suddenly, a bony tail slashes, pointy spikes trailing down to the end. Beware, tearing human flesh. It shows no mercy. Its teeth are covered, probably, in blood. Swipe, the sky rumbles, thunder strikes, just the dragon's eye. I'm what? Great drawing, punchy bit of writing, terrific work. I like the I like the um, um, beware and swipe. That works yeah. really, really well. Um, and I, I and he got away with dark and gloomy. Yes, he did. Dark and gloomy, um, actually, because it makes the poem scan better. Yeah. Uh, so, because dark and gloomy is one of those that we we don't like usually, but you got away with it there, Carter. Yeah, uh, terrific stuff. Um, so loads and wow, we're full gallery, full audio. We're we're being really spoiled this week. Yeah, people who work very hard on this, so fantastic work. Really and good. If so, you go to the teacher's notes, John, we should be able to find. I'll get there eventually. We'll I'll get, get there in the yeah. end. It's yeah, it's messing you around. You you're going to have to go back to the go back to the start and go to the 9.30 session, teacher notes, this week's... Well, up, up, one up, if you go to three, one up, one above that. So there we are. We're looking at a skyship. So that one, that is Arlo's skyship. Um, Arlo was about nine years old, eight years old when he did that, being attracted by, attacked by dragons, by sky dragons. So lovely one. If you scroll down gently... We've got a, a labelled skyship drawing by Georgia. A little oh, bit difficult to see. Yeah, it's kind of a cross section, so you can see all the internal rooms of the skyship. Yeah, and she's labelled it. So, yeah, and that's that's really good. Um, nice one, another labelled one, but look at the bold pattern. Beautifully that coloured that one. Yeah, by Ronnie. Now this is a draw, uh, a painting. So this is this was actually bigger scale. Um, uh, and not labelled. Some nice shine on that balloon, though. Like a, a Greek galleon, that one. Yeah, that's a skyship. And if we go down, the model, that was from Belmont, um, from the Emporium. The paper mache balloon. Yes. So the idea, and if you look on Vashti Hardy's um, website, you can see um, in the resources there, she's got link somewhere in the teacher notes yeah there's a basic drawing of a sky ship that you can use as a good starting point so the challenge is a sky ship could be labeled with a cross section as you said john could be done as a painting could be done as a drawing stroke design or even a model um, yeah or model it yeah so it's a bit open up to everybody but we're looking for i think we'll get some really good ones yeah um, this group Excellent. and the, the the in the gallery challenge there's a link to some resources uh and ideas on uh, vashti hardy's website so on to the last part of the session the blog challenge i'm not having too many uh, difficulties in imagining what we're doing here pi yeah basically it's now writing it up um i've i've only got six things found in a door snapsack but I seem to remember last time we had some people who went as far as 20 and made a long list. Now, you don't have to drop in extra bits of information. Um, you can do it as you wish. But we are looking for really first class ideas, careful use of the language. A bit of explanation is useful um, uh, to bring the whole thing alive. Now, lots of the ideas already on the Padlet, John, um, are going to um be handy yeah um, you can you can probably write your poem by 
by going back to the Padlet, squirreling ideas and then improving them. Yeah, so you've got that one there. Um, and I think in the teacher's notes, I probably gave, oh, yes, there's another one. Now, this was written by a little group of um, children. I'm just scrolling down to see if it, it was... It's in the teacher's notes. It was in the teacher's notes. If I've, yeah... There it is, 16 things found in a hobbit's knapsack. So it's quite a way down. It's on page 13, actually, John. 16 things there. It'll be around here somewhere. There it is, 13. Two fireflies in a jam jar to light up your way. A book of myths and legends. Oh, I think the picture's in the way, isn't it? Sorry, way. I'll, have to, I'll edit that out um, so people have got that. Um, yeah. I hadn't spotted that when I when I looked at the notes. The pic, the, the Hobbit's knapsack graphic has got in the way. It but has it, indeed, but is this this is session three, isn't it, John? That we're doing. Yes. So if I go back to my original Word document, I'll read it to you because obviously on there it won't have whoopsie. Hopefully, as what happens, everybody knows this when you. Often when you send things, bits move around, and I don't understand quite why. <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't spot that when I when I edited your notes, Pi. I do apologise. I will make sure that uh, people have that text uh, in, uh, properly in an email after the session. OK, I'll read it to you. Two fireflies in a jam jar to light up your way. A book of myths and legends, though some would call them truths. A quill of wise words that writes runes to summon a thread of starlight, a silver pen that can only be seen by the light of the moon, Gandalf's pocket watch, where you spin the hands to turn time, an enchanted reed pipe for summoning a slither of moonlight to guide you in the night, a charmed recorder for fooling or hypnotizing your foe, a cauldron of wishes at the edge of an inquisitive mind, homely hard cheese for a fireless night, a flagon of never-ending water to quench any dwarf's thirst, a golden feather plucked from the finest eagle, and a strip of slate forged in goblin mines to contact the nearest village using an ancient map of the misty mountains, the fang of a dragon to slay fleeing foe, a completely crystal dagger able to pierce through any armour, and wound even the deadliest of creatures, a pair of relatively light boots which can endure months of crossing rivers, navigating woods and stumbling through seemingly endless caves and caverns, a steel-lined cape to protect you from fire, piercing blades and the strongest of incantations. So what we're looking for, now that was 16 and they really well, uh, really extended ideas there. Um, John, so I'm not just looking for six, I'm looking for something really extended and then a careful reading um, on the um, audio will set us up very, very nicely. And I think people could probably start reading Bright Storm now to get everybody into the mood, because next week we'll be doing chapter one. Yes, excellent. So can I point out one thing that I really like about the last couple of lines there, Pi? Lists of three. They, yes. they, they tend to work really well. So endure months of crossing rivers, navigating woods, and sun stumbling through seemingly endless caves and caverns. A street line cape to protect you from fire, piercing blades, and the strangest of incan strongest of incantations. Yes. Uh, this of three worked well, and also uh, there were a couple where, where, where they, they just you used and just to link a couple of, just to change the sort of pace of it by. Yes. Uh, um, I can't see where it was now. Um, and the, and yeah, the short... a gold feather plucked from the finest edge, and a strip of slate forged in goblin. So linking two together that can work quite well. Yeah, and bung in the odd short one. The fang yeah. of a dragon to slay fleeing foe. So bung in a short one. So you've got your lists of three, which give you long sentences. Then two things joined by and. I mean, the occasional short, tight, punchy one and give you a nice rhythm going through it. So that's something to really get on with. And I think everybody can do something really good with this. 
yeah and then we can we can uh, we'll look forward to uh some audio for that one that will be terrific so we'll go back to um the um blog back to the session page the writing uh all your stories and poems are now filling up the um tag cloud quite nicely so <clears throat> do take a, a, a bit of time to go on read each other's writing and to leave each other's leave each other some comments now when when you're leaving comments we always like you to use uh, our little quality comments say something positive ask a question suggest an improvement and just because it's a comment doesn't mean you're let off the rules of punctuation and grammar. So, so when you, when you leave a comment, um, don't just dash it off. Try and make it as purposeful as you can. Think about your own writing, and uh, you know if if somebody's going to comment on your writing, think about how you would feel um, when somebody leaves a comment in yours, and if they've taken the time to write it properly and punctuate it properly compared to um i loved your just simply i love your poem and not punctuated at all there's a big difference uh for for the for the the author there if you can actually take your time to leave a quality comment so we'd like to see plenty of commenting going on on uh, not just your own poems but on other schools poems as well um share the love as much as you can so that's the end of the session uh, really enjoyed this morning session. Some terrific writing going on. So I'm looking forward to uh, reading your your final blog challenges. Yeah, some great stuff. And um, I'm going to be doing some commenting this week. I've already done a couple. I was looking at Finn's from John Moore that starts, Behold the Bellicose Dragon. <laughs> well, that's a heck of a start. Um, <laughs> that use of the word bellicose. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, great work this morning. Well done, everybody. Looking forward to seeing what you come up with. So it's bye from me. And uh, it's nearly bye from me. Just one more thing, John. Uh, we had a late entry into the gallery that really needs looking at. Can you just oh. share your screen for just 10 seconds? Oh, OK, let me just go back to the... Go back to the... Um... Oops, wrong place. Go back to the gallery. It should be in the top left. Oh, yes. Ooh. Ooh. TJS coming in here. Well, look at... <clears throat> yeah, those... those are, That's... The so, red weapon of blood th and leaves a bloodthirsty mess. It scales like a coat of steel. Its claws are sharp and ready to peel. It flies across the darkened sky and makes people have a cursed cry. So it's done as rhyming couplets, which is um, and 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 has you know. So the dragon is a fearsome beast and never stops or never sleeps. So I haven't tried too hard to force the rhyme, which some that can also work as well. So that's well done. I can't read that's in red, and I can't see the red on green. Who's written that? Can you read that, David? Uh, it's Anjana. If you if you come back out of it, there is a picture of the eye. If you go back. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Very good. Right. <laughs> give a, a little tip, if I may, John. Yeah. The dragon is a fearsome beast that never stops or never sleeps. That probably is your best one. And the reason, I think, is if you count the syllables, the dragon is a fearsome beast that never stops or never sleeps. So you've got the same amount of syllables in each line. So um, and when when you hear me say it slowly, you can hear that the two lines have got the same underlying pattern and actually beast and sleeps have got internally. You've got that E bit in the middle, which works very, very nicely, but it's really hard to do. And that's a pretty good go at it, particularly yeah. that, that particular couplet, because it's a perfect couplet. So well done for giving that a go. Uh, I love your dragon's eye as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, good, good. Right. Well, that's it from us. Uh, we will see you next week for another, uh, hopefully, quality-packed writing session um, of Teaching Live. So see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Well done.